and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode, we have Netflix 215th film from 2020. It's the Japanese anime Altered Carbon Resleeved, directed by Takuro Nakajima and Yoshiki Okada. It stars the voices of Tatsuda Suzuki, Kenji Yamuchu, Rena Sato, and Ayako Asai. I'm Jesse, and I'm here with MJ. How are you? I am very, very good. I know it's like, did you notice when you look in this movie on IMDb that they've got all the English names English for the yeah. cast first up? And I was like, I jumped on and I was like, oh, I recognize one of these vo- Japanese voices. And I'm looking at him like, oh, okay, no, I don't know this guy. He's got a very English name as well. But oh, okay, I didn't even think about it. It wasn't until <laughs> later on I went back. I'm like, they're like hidden at the bottom, like the Japanese names. Like, that's, that's wrong. I don't like that. I didn't like it either. And I double checked make sure that i should have been watching like i want to make sure i was watching it in the right language because i didn't obviously the the tv series that this is based on is an english show so i wasn't sure whether they just done an, a japanese dub as well to to because it's in that style of japanese anime or not so yeah I, I i got it a little bit confused too and had to double check that's a good check i mean obviously this is a japanese film japanese director japanese yep. cast everything about it I, I, yeah so and it would have been weird for it to just start up in Japanese. I remember that happened with the last time we did an mm. anime film. Maybe not the last time, but when we did Blam, for me, it started with English dub. And I was like, this is so strange. And I had to change it. And that's like the only time it's ever been an English dub as opposed to what it's been filmed in. Um, yeah. yeah, good. Well, we're obviously talking about this film. So we do start our show off with the Fast Flicks with a quick summary. What's your summary for this one? This is a really hard, for, for a movie that's 75 minutes, it's obviously a short film. It's really hard to summarize shortly because there's a lot going on. So I've gone with, um, you know, this is someone that you've never seen this film. What's it about? In, in a futuristic world where your consciousness can live on inside a different body, a coup is being planned within a dangerous game. I've tried it. It's so that's hard great. to keep it brief. I loved it because... I reckon I don't even say mine because I, I hate mine and I, I, I struggled. <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know what to write. Uh, I, I said, I was like, the investigation into a Yakuza. That was all, I was like, it's so much more than that, but I had nothing else um, because I no, you, you, yeah. you, you can either go one way or another, right? Just go like the broadest stroke you can yeah. imagine or try and get it all out there. I mean, I could have done another three sentences and yeah. you'd still be going, I need more information. <laughs> and then, and then I felt like I was like, Oh, I might just tell the whole story. And <laughs> it was, it's hard. It was really yeah, hard. It's hard, isn't it? It is hard. Oh God. Well, we'd like to talk about how something ends up on Netflix. So what, what could you find out about this one for us? Well, let's, I'm going to do a quick spoiler at first. I don't think I'm going to spoil it yet, but I just, I'm conscious of the fact that we kind of started speaking about the plot already. And, uh, <laughs> if, if you haven't seen Altered Carbon re-sleeved and, and you don't want to have it spoiled, um, then ha- have, a, have a watch of it and then come listen to us because we will spoil it the next you know, half hour or so. Uh, what do I find about this film? What I didn't know, Altered Carbon is a 2002 cyberpunk novel by the English writer Richard K. Morgan. Now, I'm basically ripping this whole thing from Wikipedia because it's actually quite something <laughs> nice, but... Um, that novel is set in a future in which interstellar travel and relative immortality is facilitated by transferring consciousness between bodies. As we know in this film, they're called sleeves. Uh, it follows the attempts of Takeshi Kovacs, a former UN elite soldier turned private investigator, to investigate a rich man's death. It's followed by sequel books um, called Broken Angels and Woken Fury. So this is a book series. Didn't know. I've obviously heard of Also Carbon, the TV show. That was based on a book series. So the book was adapted, as I said, into a Netflix TV series, also titled Alter Carbon in 2018. In 2019, there was a graphic novel that was created by Dynamite Comics. So this is a Japanese anime film that is basically a spin-off of the Netflix Altered Carbon TV series. Um, for those who are aware, it is set 253 years before the main events of season one. 283 years before the events of season two. Uh, this film itself is directed, as you said, by Joe Nakajima. It was written by Dai Soto and um, Sukasa Kondo. Uh, and it was released on Netflix on March 19, 2020. Uh, obviously, this being a Netflix property already, Netflix on board from the start, getting it all done, getting it all sorted. But really, basically, you have to assume that they're trying to really branch out that, that altered carbon audience. You sort of hope that the 
the rusted on altered carbon fans are going to come and watch this because it's part of the altered carbon universe but it might also attract that real anime audience um because it is a little bit different yeah and the the designs in this film were um created by a manga artist as well so obviously you you're trying to target that audience too and i guess it works for the prequel um because obviously set before the the tv shows and and the novels too um the, the Netflix series that it's based on, like the two seasons that they had, is reportedly the most expensive Netflix production to date when it came out. Um, they didn't disclose the actual costs, but they said it had a bigger budget than the first three seasons of Game of Thrones put together for the, the two seasons of Vault really? of Carbon. How crazy is that? Like, I, I haven't seen the, the TV series. Obviously, the TV Neither. series isn't anime, but that's crazy that that's how much money. I watched the trailer. For the the first season because it intrigued me just to see what, what sort of production values yeah. does it have um a little bit a little bit nuts that, that amount of money was spent um i did not I, know that yeah i i like this this is one of the little trivia bits from the film i guess and at the start of the film there's uh there's like this scene in sort of a nightclub i guess and the dj quotes uh all the world's a stage which is a shakespeare quote from his uh his piece as you like it and the final confrontation of this this film sort of uh, takes place on the stage as well so i like that little link um, just as a nice little side note, translations across the world for this one. Um, in Portuguese, it's called Altered Carbon, A New Body, which I don't mind. That gives a bit more context to what the film's about. In Russia, it was called Altered Carbon, Recycled. <laughs> but that was a bit of a funny <laughs> one. And um, in Ukraine, it was called Modified Carbon, Restored. So uh, a couple of different takes on on the I think the that's, a, that's a very literal, literal <laughs> translation. I think they've literally translated <laughs> each word in that title. <laughs> I think so too. Um, what were the, the critics and audiences saying about this one? So from what I can gather in general, the the animation side of things was, was quite heavily praised. And it looked great. It did look great. Um, but the characters and the plot were criticised a little bit. Um, it's a six and a half out of 10 on IMDb off 6,300 ratings. It's a, a, just a solid three out of five on Letterboxd with three and a half thousand ratings. And there's just under 5,000 people who have watched it on Letterboxd. So not, not enormous numbers, um, but, you know, this is technically an international film. Um, you know, IMDb and Letterboxd are mostly, you know, English-speaking countries that use them. So um, hard to get a real indication of how popular this was. It might have been really big in Japan. Yeah. Um, Rotten Tomatoes sits at a 60%. That's only on five reviews, so it is, it is classified as fresh. Uh, the audience had it a little bit lower, 53% on more than a hundred ratings. So all sitting around that that three-ish out of five mark, I guess. Um, so pretty similar across the board. What what are your early thoughts for this one? I, I, I am not across the Altered Carbon TV show and, and therefore the concept, um, but I really enjoyed this. And, and maybe it's because the concept felt fresh and exciting to me. I think it's a, it's a really cool concept. Like as soon as I figured out what was going on in this world, the idea of the the ability to transfer consciousness. I was like, man, the possibilities for these stories are, are endless. And there's so many, um, I don't know. I, I think I just enjoyed the world that was created, the mystery, because all the mystery around it feels really plausible um, because of what you can do with with um, the possibility of these stories because of the, the consciousness thing. The action was pretty good. It was a, obviously a, a short run time. It didn't feel rushed at all, despite the fact that it was a short run time. So all in all, you've got a pretty good movie watching experience with all those pieces put together. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm the same. I, like, I had no context of this whole altered carbon universe. So I think I was glad because like you mentioned too, it took a while to actually figure out what was going on. Like I was paying real close attention to start with. So I think I'm glad it was almost like a prequel, um, meaning that you didn't really have to understand the character context. But realistically, like you sort of touched on, I guess there's not a lot of real character building anyway. So it sort of all revolved mm. around these cool action sequences. But yeah, visually quite stunning and I enjoyed it. Yeah, good. I'm glad. Characters. Hit us off with some characters from this one. Characters are like I'm gonna start with with Takeshi or, or he's known as Ken mostly in the film, but Takeshi Kovacs, who appears to be like the man in all of the mm. older carbon books and shows and everything like that. It's it's just such an interesting time to meet a new character when they're just entering a new body effectively. You know, did he just die in his old life or was he just looking for a new sleep because he had to, you know, change or get away from change his identity? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. there's obviously a bit going on with his backstory, but he's obviously, you know, this widely skilled assassin of sorts. Um, he's shown to have a little bit more compassion 
uh, especially for like for like the little person in the fight and he'll put his life at risk basically to help those people although it does feel like he's in a position where he doesn't have a choice I, I kind of feel like he's almost being blackmailed by what he's doing so uh, it, it is really kind of hard to pick up on it all and I don't think that takes away from the from the story too much but there's a lot going on there that either they want you to figure out later or before or they'll do more with this there's just a lot that they leave on the table with all the characters really yeah i think like the, they try to set it up a little bit to start off with that he and they do this through his sister obviously which we've already said a spoiler alert but you know he, he obviously misses his sister and believe i'm um, under the, the belief that he thinks that she's dead so um he doesn't like you said doesn't like sort of people being involved with kids with crime but like you mentioned too he's sort of got no choice in in being involved in this criminal world because he's got to pay off his his debts or whatever it is to, to clear his name. Um, and obviously that's why he's hired. And, um, you know, I guess that that back feeling of him needing his records cleaned and then possibly picking up a new sleeve somewhere and, and you know, hiding that identity is a possibility in this world. So um, oh, yeah. the fact that he has to do this, um, you know, it makes sense. Uh, I thought it was funny that, you know, he's been in this new new sleeve, he's been given like the sort of best body, but it's got this nicotine addiction. So that was a, a quite a little, you know, <laughs> you, you possibly sort of highlighting you can't possibly get the ultimate body in this world. There's always <laughs> going to be some flaw somewhere in um in a, in a body as well. And like you said too, this reputation that sort of precedes him, that, that shock from Holly when she sort of finds out who he is, I thought that was quite an interesting little thing to drop in for someone who doesn't know the character that, okay, this guy is the deal, he's the real deal. Um, and he does yeah. you know, put his line, line out there. Yeah. He, All right, who else? He should have been seen smoking more often. I think he only smoked like <laughs> once or twice. And he made such a point that he's like, I can't kick this addiction. Um, so we're going to go with Gina next. I think her real name is Raylene. Or well, probably not pronounced like that. It's a very Australian way to say it. But um, <laughs> obviously, she's another very talented killer or fighter, whatever they are. But she, she seems to come from a more conventional background. It's, it seems like she's working, working herself around to get particular answers and do the right thing despite not being linked to particular agencies. So she does seem to work for these agencies, but she's a bit of a lone wolf with her, with her motives. I, I, I do think there was a really interesting backstory when she discovered that, that Takeshi is, is actually her older brother, but the film itself obviously doesn't really want to go down that path too much. Yeah. It, it bummed me a little bit because I did want to explore that, but I think that's for another, another story to explore. Um, I did. I did think I read somewhere that in the book, like they weren't related, they weren't brother and sister. It's something that they've gone off and done on their own. But yeah. um, there's there's something there, and makes you wonder if they want to, you know, plan more and more of these films to to really dig into it. Yeah, I think um, I liked that as a female agent, strong physically and strong with her morals too. And I think I'll probably talk about in some scenes and things that didn't necessarily work with me for her, but I, I like that idea of you know, that brother-sister connection, because it did add that further, that layer, even though they didn't explore it too much, it added that little bit of a layer that sort of gave you a further understanding as to why she stuck around and why she went against her orders and and why she, you know, mm. didn't get rid of Polly because obviously she she wanted to spend more time with her brother and, and do the right thing too. Yeah. I've got Holly next. Um, I actually, I definitely thought we were going to get a bit more from Holly. Obviously, you start this film with a girl running for her life. You sort of feel like she's the one. Um, and it did feel like she was kind of just a pawn in all of this. And it's kind of like she has this accidental link with with Ken and Gina that progresses her story as, to, as opposed to her coming out of her shell. I think she has this really, really interesting backstory with her parents and, and how she's basically blackmailed into keeping and continuing this generational dirty secret. But despite all of that she does still so much for this film she's a bit of a damsel in distress um which i, I didn't expect that from her i kind of thought that there was going to be her coming out of her shell was going to be the, the big opening and awakening of this film yeah from what i could gather i don't think she's a character in the tv series so just a character for okay. this this film and me thinking a little bit about her as a character she possibly like the oldest person in this whole film because obviously it keeps changing bodies um and i get that I, I think that works well with that idea like you mentioned of not wanting to grow old because she wants to reunite with her parents and still you know be able to bring them back in some some way mm -hmm. as well and i didn't mind the closure that 
that we saw in this character for you know being ready to move on, especially at the at that final scene. You know, I'm going to stick around in this body now because Ryan, I found you. my I found my new family. I've got I've got um, Gina and and I've got um, Ken and and you know I want them to see me grow old. So I didn't mind that, um, you know. But I think like you mentioned too that that idea of you know talking about you know she's been a troublemaker since she was a kid, doesn't like taking orders, didn't really lead to to much else. Um, apart from, you know, being central to this whole um, routine that they do with the tattooing because, yeah, you, you sort of, in the start of the film, you introduced to her, so you expect that storyline to be the central one that you're going to follow the whole time. Mm. Hmm. I've got Genzo and just he's kind of, and Genzo is probably not his real name, he keeps changing, but anyway, um, he's basically just an example of how you can, thought the system and the possibilities that you do have in a world like this like you can lead um you can lead people for generations and generations if if you're hungry and you're savvy enough to do it and i thought that was actually a really clever part of the story when it got revealed that he just keeps knocking them off and 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 continuing in power um I, I, that that sort of stuff really worked for me is that genzo or shinji shinji is the new was the new one that was the taking over yeah. Which eventually, and eventually Genzo ended yeah. up being Shinji, being, but yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that, why it's that, confusing. That, it. confusing yeah. that recognizing it, the, the thing that I just touched on was that that laugh that sort of gave it away as to who he was, so that um, um, Hideki could work out what was going on. So, yeah, I, th- I think that was nice too, though. That was yeah, nice, that was nice. Chuck that in because that makes sense. Yeah. I just put in um, a guy as just that comedic relief that AI did. He <laughs> <It> was <laughs> yeah. just one of those those characters you do see in anime that is there for the laughs. Well, I I also got Shinji, which is like the original Shinji before he yep. got taken over, because uh, he's he's the threat in this film because he he's the one who's planning this this coup, and you're kind of like ah oh, this guy they like this guy, and but at the end of the day he was like entirely justified to do what he was doing. <laughs> I don't think he necessarily knew at the time that he was walking towards his own death by having a, you know, inauguration of being the new leader. Um, but he was probably right in his instincts to get rid of this Genzo guy and, and lead on his own, regardless of any formal sort of, um, you know, whatever the ritual they were going to go through. Um, so it's kind of funny as well that the guy who seems like the bad guy, who still kind of isn't a great guy, was actually really well justified in planning that coup because he was actually going to save his own life without even really knowing it. I don't know. That whole kind of thing just worked for me. Good. Um, I haven't got any other characters um, to touch on. The directors too, that, I mean, look like fairly newcomers to, they only had a couple of credits each. So I haven't got anything to say about them either. I have very little bad. Yes. Good. So let's talk about the scenes. What are some things that you enjoyed in this? Well, I actually think they did they did a lot in the first six minutes. Um, but to be honest, by the time they'd done that little introduction, I felt entirely across this this universe or this concept, and I was immediately keen to see where it was all going. I didn't feel overawed by it. I think I had to work hard for those first little bit, but they explained it well. They even had like a narration, or was, I think it was like a small narration for like three or four lines that just explained like, Hey, we, we transfer consciousness and we use these sleeves. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm in, I get it. I know what you're saying. And it just, I was like, this is super interesting. So straight away, I think they did a really good job of setting this up, which would have been really, really hard. Um, I think so I was um, impressed with that. That voice in the English dub, the, the voiceover is done by one of the characters, one of the characters from the actual TV series as well. The little, little Easter egg for fans. I mean, it would make sense that whoever plays, I mean, sure, it changes all the time, actually, because I've got does, different yeah. sleeves. But yeah, whoever plays Takeshi, whoever I think plays season Takeshi, two was Anthony Anthony Mackey uh, from. Um, I did see he yeah, was in it. Yeah, it's crazy. Sorry, keep um, going. No, that's all right. The only other scene that I've got that I really liked was um, was a fight, the first fight scene in the street with all those red ninja guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Like the threat was really real, and that's also when you first um, you first recognize that you can have a true death by basically killing your database um they introduced that really nicely but it just felt like the, the danger felt really real the, the enemy felt like they were completely accomplished and it really tested out our two protagonists and brought them together i thought it was a great scene i thought the action in this film in general was really really good yeah i understand well, that was the first thing that i had as well that scene because you know that tight alley way sort of environment but the camera work for an anime like the, the the depth that they showed as as the fight progressed with um 
you know, these red suits and the red gas. It was just um, super impressive. And, you know, the, some of the, the graphic violence with the kneecaps and yeah. the jumping around the Sigma, like it was really well choreographed fight, which is sometimes hard to do in animation to make it look realistic. And it, it like it felt real. Um, so yeah. I enjoyed that too. And I enjoyed the other fight scene in the um, the corridor with the, the oh, again, yeah. those red ninjas, like the slice of the guy down the middle of his body, has blood that everywhere. Was it was, that was a, like, I think the action in this was, was really cool. Um, the only other thing that I've got is, um, I mean, the O guy character didn't, didn't, you know, there's one part that I really liked where he sort of makes this joke about the insurance costs, not being able to cover all the damage from that fight. <laughs> and then his machine guns sort of come out the walls and, you know, fire away. And it's like, oh, nothing's happening. And like, the arrow is all just like, <laughs> yeah, that was clever, actually. I was like, oh, crap, that's all I got. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> is there anything in this that you didn't like? I didn't like the fact that when uh, when Gina killed that security guard, they just kept using his, his security pass for the next couple of days. That didn't they would have shut that security <laughs> pass down. <laughs> like, this guy shouldn't have access to any rooms anymore. Um, and and uh, this, is, this is a personal thing that gets me with a lot of these sorts of films is that the final fight scene, regardless of how powerful and strong and the weapons and everything, it's always like this fist fight and like to the point where they are pummeling each other, <laughs> like absolutely pummeling each other. Like they both would have been dead like a minute into this fight and uh, they just keep going and keep going. I, I just never liked that. I don't know the solution to it, but it's just, it, I always find it tedious and it's a bit too much. I know this is a very violent film, but like, come on, these guys took an absolute beating um so i know i want someone to think of a way around that you can't just obviously just shoot someone and then three seconds later it's all over i know i know that but yeah it's just a bit much i've got both those scenes but for different reasons <laughs> uh, which is crazy um the when she takes that that pass um when when gina like she showed cleavage to get what she wanted and for me she was a strong strong character strong female and I just thought that was really not needed and didn't like didn't add to the context of her character. I found her as she could use her mind and her physicality to get what she wanted. She didn't need to use sexualized ways to do that. So that really annoyed me. Um, I would argue that she used her mind and her physicality. She she read the room, right? Like she understands that this is what she can do to get her way. And I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like you're making a film, you can just avoid it. But it was yeah. it's pretty savvy to still rely on what you do have. Yeah. Well, I, I get why they do it. I just would have liked to have seen her. Yeah, I, yeah do that's it there, fair. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing with that final, like just the idea that the Shinju guy comes out in like that huge suit. <laughs> I just thought that, that that was like ridiculous. Like, that, why, why why did he have to have this huge suit? He's got the, like, it was just lame, especially when, the like you mentioned, the final battle was a fist fight anyway. So he didn't need that that big suit to to show his strength. Um, yeah. Well, what, what's his name? Bloody Takeshi or Ken had that gun that was a pretty bloody powerful gun. Powerful, so maybe yeah. he needed the suit to make sure that we had to take the gun Didn't out of the question away. as well. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, all right. What, what are some themes or some ideas in this one? Oh, man. This film is so much about power. Um, like who has the power, who needs the power, who you can use to protect yourself, how long can you sustain power for? I mean, Power is so much, and the one guy who has power for generations and generations got too greedy, got too greedy in the end, killed by his own son. Like, I, mm. I still don't necessarily know. I mean, I guess because he killed his other son and he wanted to revenge for his brother, but like, he was, he was pretty hell bent on killing his dad, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but power, man, power plays a huge part, and so does the idea of sort of disingenuity. Um, and that's that's this world that we live in, right where you can basically reset your past at the drop of a hat, or at least reset what people know about you, it just becomes a really cold world where you'd struggle to form any real relationships or the fact that you'd probably be on constant alert as to who is actually being truthful and who is genuine, because basically no one is genuine in this world. Um, and that's a really fascinating thing to approach in a film. Is this what we're heading towards? You know, like it's, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, it leads to that idea of technology too. Like, how far can we advance? Like, how how much can we actually change civilization based on the advancements in technology? Um, and it leads that ties into that idea of life versus eternal life too. Like, how meaningful is death? Where you're in a world where death doesn't actually mean anything. So that, that those those ideas of what life what life actually means to be through and part of life is, is family. And to me, 
that I sort of jumped on that idea of family in this too, especially, you know, missing lost ones, whether it's a, a brother or a sister, whether it's parents um, and the idea of, of clinging on to something that you can't have if, if death is a real thing, whereas in this world, death isn't a real thing. So it adds a whole bunch of new complexities to, to the human conscious because how do you let go when you don't necessarily have to let go? Um, so how do you deal with that pain? Um, that pain might be everlasting now because you're just clinging on to the fact that possibly a loved one can come back, which is an interesting concept. 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 But how crazy is that? Yeah. So you say family is a big part of this film, but nobody actually has family in yeah. this film. Because you've got the brother and sister who are literally working together, but can't like admit that they're family together because they've changed so much. You've got a, a kid who's trying to kill his dad because his dad mm. is just reigning power over everyone, including his family. And then you've got someone who's yearning the loss of her family, which God knows how long ago that actually was. And she doesn't actually end up getting them. And that's like, is this, is this the world that we're heading? How different is it to what we're doing right now? Like social media, right? You've got your social media life versus your real life. Right. And it, it's almost like you can hide behind. It, it's not quite AI, but it's not far off. Like you've got these two worlds and you talk about the idea of the metaverse and talking. I mean, I was in a bloody Microsoft Teams meeting the other day when everyone, instead of having their videos on, they just had their avatar on so they could behave the way. like this is this is what we're heading towards and altered carbon sounds like it's miles away <laughs> but the concepts and the ideas behind it probably aren't completely true yeah good that was good i like that was a, that was the best uh, <laughs> best the first chat for a while um did you go into imdb to look anyone up any voices mate i i was so convinced that whoever voice can i just knew the voice that deep strong japanese voice and I, I'm like, maybe it's from a Studio Ghibli film or something that might, but I didn't, I, I, it bothered me so much because I first looked at it. Is he the one, it was one like punch the dude? Did you do the voice of the one punch character? I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know. Have you seen Somewhat. one punch? Like the anime no. one punch? No. Okay. I reckon, I reckon he's the voice from that. I didn't look it up, maybe but I think was. he is. Yeah. Mate, his voice was so familiar oh. and I just wanted to see like the credit and be like, oh, that's him. But that's him. I, I clearly didn't know him. Maybe someone's got a voice just like him, but it really bothered me. That's right. Um, I didn't, didn't jump on at all. So have you got any questions that you wanted to ask? Well, did you want to talk about any film takeaways, Jesse, or did you just completely skip that category? I did skip that. Give me a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, to be honest, Takeaway of the things that I've talked about the most, obviously the action and the violence was actually, you know, really, really good and and something that I, I would recommend to people if they're into that sort of stuff. And secondly, it's just the concept. And I just went off on a tangent about how much I enjoy the concept. Um, but it's, it's a cool concept. And honestly, I'm probably going to watch the TV show. I reckon, I reckon I'm interested enough to watch it. So um, it's really interesting. Same for me. The, the visuals were what really got me over, I think, too, as well as obviously the, the ideas and what's going on. But the, the colours... And that neon sort of cyberpunk mm. vibe, or whatever you want to call it, I just thought that were, that that design was so good, so good. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. All right, questions. <laughs> you got any questions? I got a question that you kind of touched on before, but I I, I really know that you can't really answer. But you know, how long has Holly been around for and doing this again, though? So, from what I can gather, though, it's only been like three generations that they've been doing this in this mm-hmm. hierarchy. But yeah. do you reckon she's been around the whole time? Yeah, I reckon she's been. She was the original person that started the ceremony, so I reckon yeah. she's been there the whole time, yeah. and that's why she's so sick yeah. of it and wants to get out. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a tough life. Sure is. Um, you already just answered one of the ones I had for you too. Like, did this intrigue you enough to check out the TV series? So, <laughs> I think it did. I think it did. How about you? Um, yeah, I I think I probably would. Not in a massive rush, but I probably would would check it out. TV is just such a big commitment. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it i know this was this was 74 minutes i'm pretty sure I, I had a look season one episode one is 58 minutes so you could either watch that or you could just stick around That's for another 15 minutes and watch this <laughs> <laughs> um got this one this was a little bit of a criticism that some people thought that this was like a video game without the interactivity does that ha- like i don't I, I get i understand there's probably some scenes like especially the fight scenes that you probably feel like you should be playing along and they do when they um you know, they put those, they go into the VR mode. It sort of goes to like a first person sort of view, but I didn't really feel that. I'm also not a gamer. So I don't feel like there's like a craving to be like, Oh, I'd love to be involved in this. this. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, um, 
applauding it in some way as well. Like this is so engaging that I want to be part of it. Part of it. Um, True. Yeah. It's a good takeaway. This one. <laughs> Do you fear death? Do I fear death? I don't think I actively fear it, but the idea of it is 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 pretty yeah. terrifying in the sense that you don't get a chance to live the life you want to live. But yeah. it's not something I think about on a daily basis. Yeah. Well, that's what is it like? The three things that are inevitable are death, taxes, and something else. I stuffed that up completely, but yeah. I think it's life, <laughs> life, death, death and taxes. taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um. All right. Well, I think we're ready to wrap this one up. Put it all together. Give a film I think a rating out of five, and let's go for it. What's your What's your final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I had a blast watching this. Um, you know, the concepts, the, even the specifics of this story and the, and the mystery around the characters all worked for me. As I said, I was a little bummed by the fact that it clearly existed in this wider universe. So there was important parts of the story that weren't elaborated on. But that only removed a little bit of the enjoyment for me. And and you know what? I, it leaves it open for a wider world, which I'm, I'm open to as well. But I'm giving this three and a half stars. Nice. Good. Um, yeah, I, like, I felt like a super short sort of introduction into this world of sleeves and, and altered carbon. And I think like I said, like, it sort of intrigues me. Probably to give the show a shot. I'm like, I'm not going to rush to it, though. Um, as like obviously you've got to talk about this as a standalone and I sort of thought about yep. when we looked at um, the Breaking Bad movie as well because I had very little context behind that and you know as far as this is as a standalone I thought it worked really well um, because from what I can gather there's enough reference to the TV show to please fans but it was easily enough to understand for a newcomer especially with that that introduction that you spoke about and you know great action and the animation was, was super engaging colourful bright Really enjoyed it too. Giving it a three out of five. Lovely. 3.25. One of our higher ones. Very nice. We Good. are on socials. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Give us a follow if you can. Question for this week is, would you accept eternal life? Would you, would, that's this, uh, this is such a great question. Like, would you accept eternal life in the context of altered carbon? Carbon, just, yeah. As in yeah, you change yeah. bodies, yeah. How much would it change the way you act, right? Like... Yeah when the ability that you can just like cut ties with anyone and anything, whenever you want, like it's, it's, it's a scary thought. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd want to be in someone else's body because, you know, realistically, depending where you are and stuff, then that, that body that you're in is going to have its own context and its own history as well, that you're probably going to have to deal with at some stage. So it's not like a, a, a clean sort of um, swipe at, you know, being yourself forever and ever. It's like, adapting and changing too and i don't know whether you know if you've lived a strong fulfilled life do you really want to have to adapt and change and start all over again i don't think that's yeah, something I that'd be helpful yeah I, I i'd be interested to see so obviously this is a prequel to the tv series and this yeah. is still very much into this world like this world has obviously been going around for quite a while i would like to see the, like the origin of how this sort of stuff starts the world that we kind of know and live in now that's slowly going hey guess what we can do we can uh swap your consciousness over to another body i'd love to see that kind of process I, that'd be a hard thing to write and hard thing to look at but you know would it be a case of you grow old with your family and then when you're about to die you switch over but you switch over together and then you kind of start with, like stay together it's, yeah. it's, it's it's really interesting i think the possibilities are endless and like, do you need money to be able to do this? Like, do you have to be well, a part of Well, that's true as well. Like, yeah, you you transfer money to your new... Money. Yeah. But like, do you have to be wealthy to be able to transfer yourself uh, in the first place? So if you're in the lower class of society, you, you've got no yeah, chance anyway. Go. Yeah. Although someone yeah. can just grab your bloody database, right? And then they can... They can... Crazy. Crazy, crazy thoughts. Crazy. Good discussion. Crazy. Enjoy is. today. Um, we're back next week. Uh, another international film from 2020. It's an Italian drama called Ultras which is directed by Francesco Letieri. It stars Anilio Arena, Ciro Nakara, and Simone Borelli. That's what we've got next week for you. Ultras. 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 As always, this has uh, been a good chat. We've, I think we've covered off this one quite well for a, such a short film. This has been a great chat. I didn't realise how into this I'd be Based, from a, yeah. um, just <laughs> diving, diving deeper and deeper. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. That's good. All right. We'll speak soon. See you, mate.